guys, Stephanie again from Sewing with Stephanie. I'm so excited to share with you guys today one of my favorite techniques. It's how to drape an amazing exaggerated ruffle. You can put it on a one shoulder top, you can put it on a bust line, you can put it in any seam and it's truly, truly an amazing technique to have in your arsenal. Before we get started, please hit subscribe below and click thumbs up so that other people can find these videos. Before we get started, I would love to hear from you guys. Please comment below on how you imagine yourself using this technique. This amazing ruffle exaggerated drape technique is so cool, it's so powerful, you can use it in any design. So I wanna hear about how you wanna use it. Please comment below and we can all get inspired by each other's project ideas. Okay, so in order to get started, you need several strips of muslin. The longest, you, the longer the strip, the better. Um, and that's okay if they're not too long, you can always pin together several strips. These are pretty wide for the kind of ruffle that I'm gonna do. Uh, so I'm actually gonna cut them in half to a thinner piece, but it's up to you and your design and your fabric how thick you intend that ruffle to be from a design perspective. If your fabric is stiffer, maybe it's a, a silk dupe yoni or a neoprene or something like that, you can get by with a thicker ruffle that stands out more. But if you're using a cotton or something that's a little bit more fluid or loose, you're gonna need a thinner piece and, and you won't be able to create as much volume, but you'll still be able to create a lot of interest. So today I'm actually gonna drape with the smaller, thinner piece, just so you can see what we can do with just this kind of four inch strip. So on my mannequin, I've used my um, satin bias tape to draw out a one shoulder sleeve top. You can draw out whatever design you want. Using this technique, you can really put the ruffle into any seam anywhere, on a hip, bust, back, shoulder, wherever, but I figure the best place to show it is right on the shoulder. My design intention is to have the ruffle really big right at the top of the shoulder, very Latin American inspired, and then kind of taper off closer um, as it gets into the opposite arm. So the bulk of it is gonna be right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use my thin strip and I'm just gonna pin it starting right somewhere where I'd like the ruffle to start kind of three quarters of the way on the back. And this is just a straight edge. So I'm just gonna pin the straight edge along that ribbon line. Now, before I get too far into it, I think what I want is maybe a little bit of a ruffle. So I'm gonna fold the fabric back on itself like this. and then pin it, again, right on that seam line. So already I'm creating just a little bit of volume. It's not a lot, it's just a little. But maybe I'm gonna go back one more time here and fold it on itself one more time. And you can see now I've created a little bit more layers and ruffle. This is essentially the basis of what we're gonna be doing today. It's very simple. You're gonna be folding and draping the fabric back and forth on itself until you get a shape that you fall in love with. Okay, so now that we've reached the shoulder, I'm gonna go a little crazy. So basically, and it's best actually if you pin these pins away. So I should, I should fix that. Pin them away from the fabric so that you can continue to drape on top. And I'm gonna layer even more. Maybe I'm gonna go over and then I'm gonna wrap the fabric in on itself. I'm just gonna see what this looks like. And then I'm gonna pin this, these additional folds down. Now, here's where it gets fun. Because right now you're just thinking this looks like pleats. But now what we have to do is peel back the layers and see what we've created. And again, using a cotton, this is about the height that you're gonna be able to get without it drooping over because it weighs too much. But you can see I've created this very organic kind of fold. And I think I could go even more with that and play this ruffle up even more. So I'm gonna flatten it out and keep going. Maybe this fold should be a little bigger. Yeah, I'll do that. 
And this is where you're like, ooh, ooh I'm running short on fabric. So maybe I'll use this one and pin using my straight small pins. Oops. Pin them together. So now that we have some extra length, we can feel comfortable going even more crazy. Here. Move back one more time here before kind of taking this forward. So the drape that I have on top of the shoulder, because I had said that that's where I want the bulk of it to be, has one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers, five, six, maybe seven layers of fabric. That's a lot of fabric for me to manipulate up, and I'm going to play with it, and let's see, actually, let's do that right now. Let's see what it looks like once we fold it up. So taking a look at that, you can see I've got quite an interesting shape here. I'm not sure I love it. I feel like I would go back, maybe I'll go back right now and create something a little bit more interesting. That just looks kind of thrown together, which it is. So but what I'm going to do is take these out and I think what I'm going to do is create a swirl type shape. So in order to take a swirl type shape, I'm going to grab a bit lower down and I'm gonna fold it in on itself. So I'm grabbing a little bit and folding it. So I'm gonna start small, a little small fold, then a little bit of a bigger fold. So it's, a, it's when you're folding it, you're creating like, you know, a, it's a swirl, but with larger, larger size fold every time. Okay. Now, I've got a little bit extra excess here, so why not just fold that? Okay, so this is why you gotta play around with it because you never know when something is flat, how that's gonna look when it's straight, and that's the most fun part about this draping technique. Okay, you guys ready to see what this looks like? All right, let's start peeling it back. Okay, there's my little tiny fold. And then here is the very center of my swirl. So it's like a rosette almost. That is gorgeous. And this is something, again, stiffer material um, would really make this stand out and be very, like give a wow factor. The other thing that would be great about it is adding some kind of either bias binding on the edge or a stitch or beading to highlight the swirl shape that you're making because it looks so architectural and it looks so difficult. But when you realize all it is is just fabric folded on top of each other, um, it's really quite, it's really an amazing technique. So that is actually where I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna fold it back on itself just a little more. You know, you can also put like a little stiffener. Oh, I realized I didn't pin it in there, okay? Once you decide you like the shape that you've made, flatten your design back out and then get ready to start notching and making marks. This can be the most difficult part of the process because not only are you marking off the seam line, but you need to start marking the folds. So on this fold, I'm going to fold, I'm going to put a notch and then I'm going to put a notch on the top of the fabric that's right there and I'm going to write one one, okay? So that, no so that we know that that notch goes to that notch, one, one. Now, I'm gonna lift this up because I know there's something else underneath it. Right here. Mark both of those and write two, two. And continue going. It's gonna get more confusing as we go to the top, but that's okay, just go notch by notch, three, three, or I should say fold by fold, so that you know when you're sewing it up, you're matching one to one, two to two, three to three. 
in that exact order. If you've already draped your shirt underneath, you would also want to match some of these matches. You don't have to match them all, but a few of them to your underlayer shirt so you know where one then matches up to the bodice. Okay, so now I have over here, I have four. And I'm just gonna keep going around. When you're finished labeling, then carry out the rest of your drape. So we might want to pivot this a little. Just going to curve this edge so we can see what it looks like. Now this part is sticking up and I don't like that. So what I would do is just cut and release it. And then tape in another layer of muslin, just like you would in any kind of flat patterning. So you now created a curve here instead of pulling the fabric. And then you have a beautiful rosette, ruffle, exaggerated ruffle drape. How fun was that? So easy, so effective, an amazing pattern making technique. You can really use this anywhere and really create a powerful, strong look in your garments at home. Thank you so much for watching Sewing with Stephanie today. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create an amazing ruffle drape. Please don't forget to hit subscribe below and click thumbs up so that other people can find these videos. See you again soon.